Greetings, everyone. This is Sayo the Terror of Death 99, aka the Black Cobra. And this is Phoenix Wright, its attorney, Trials and Tribulations. Now, time for a quick little recap. Now, when we last left off, when we last left off last night, we actually found out that the mysterious phony Phoenix Wright was actually a, I guess you'd say the head of a, the head of a, um, you know what, fuck it, I'll, I'll just show you. Furio Tigre, the head of Tenderlender Loan Company, basically he's a loan shark. Or as he calls himself, the Tiger. And we also found out that Bruno Cataverini, the head of the Cataverini Crime Syndicate, his granddaughter, Viola, is actually one the employee of Furio. He, she actually started working for Furio after Furio actually saved her from a near-fatal car crash. Anyway. Let's get down to business. Here we have Maggie Bird. Uh, greetings, Maggie. Yesterday's session didn't go so well and ended on a giant mystery. Very true. We still haven't solved a single part of it yet. Oh yeah, oh yeah. A few other things I should have I should also mention. We also found out that Victor Kudo was actually kicked was forced out of the restaurant for some still unknown reason to actually call the police. By Mr. Jean Armstrong. Personally, what I think the reason was was so that he can actually frame Maggie and actually steal that half million dollar lottery ticket. But we still don't know if that's true or not. He would have a motive to do so, but. Did he actually do so? And we also found out that Glenn Elg actually works for Louisa Basil. Worked for Louisa Basil, the CEO of Blue Screens Inc., and actually would be a professional hacker. Speaking of hackers, he actually made this MC Bomber. Computer virus made by Glenn Elg, potentially worth millions of dollars. We also found out that Furio Tigre actually made a paper badge so that he can actually look like Phoenix Wright. This is actually the potassium cyanide that actually killed the victim, Glenn Elg. Somebody had actually framed Maggie Bird by putting it in her apron pocket when she was passed out. We still don't know, though, who it was. I, have a, I, actually, have a, I actually have a guess, but I am not positive as to who it was yet. Personally, I think it was him, Furio Tigre. Anyway, let's continue, shall we? I still haven't solved a single part of it yet. I'm fine, Maya. That wasn't doubt, that was determination. Ah, that, 
my friends, is the medicine bottle that the victim Glenn Elg was, at, was actually using. His left eardrum was actually ruptured. We also found out that he was actually wearing a an HMD over his left eye and potentially also his left eardrum. Question is, why would he actually do that if his left eardrum was ruptured and he couldn't hear a damn thing? That is what we still don't know. We had actually taken this... We had actually taken this to the detective to actually possibly get some fingerprints. Oh, I do remember that. medication bottle. the un unidentified fingerprints. Anything on that? Someone screwed up so they only had time to analyze the contents of the bottle. Mm. That's gonna... That's gonna weaken an imp its impact as a piece of evidence. Alright. Today's trial. I want to expose that guy for what he's done, or my name is not Phoenix Wright. Let us continue, shall we, everyone? This is the second trial. Buckle up, everyone. This is going to be a bumpy and very long ride. Hope you're ready, everyone, So I know I am. <laughs> Court of Sound Session for the trial of Miss Maggie Bird. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Ready and waiting. Get away and get underway at once. <clears throat> Yesterday we heard the testimony of Mr. Victor Kudo. He claims to have witnessed the defendant putting a powder into the victim's coffee. However, witness's testimony was played with a number of problems. The mark of the rim of the cup shows that the victim drank from it with his right hand. But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left hand. Thank you, Mr. Godot. Furthermore, according to the witness's account, the victim was listening to the radio with an earpiece in his left ear. Yet, the victim's left eardrum was ruptured, which made him effectively deaf in that ear. Very true there, Maya. Then, Godot. The world, you see, keeps turning and we must turn with it. Do not let the mysteries of yesterday mystify you today. Only losers think like that. Gotta change with the times. That's one of my rules.
Your guy wasn't just throwing seed in here. He was throwing us off the scent. One, one thing I should mention, everyone. This, this song happens to be one of my personal favorites from the Phoenix Wright series. It is actually called The Fragrance of Dark Coffee. And personally, not only do I actually think it's an excellent character theme, I think it's actually a great jazz theme in general. I would love to hear someone actually do a cover of this song. Very good way to actually calm someone down. Anyway. Continue, shall we? Very well. Let the first witness take the stand. And you are? And no, I am not going to be doing the French accent tonight, everyone. I'm really not in the mood for it tonight. You know what? I'll do it. I am Jay Armstrong, the owner and the chef of La Trebienne Restaurant. I don't care. Oh la la, monsieur. As you can see, I am a leopard and perky gentleman, no? On the day of the incident, you were in Trebian's kitchen. Isn't that right? It's you, monsieur. Everything feels right. Does anything intimidate this guy? Honest to God, he actually reminds me a lot of myself. It's very hard, actually nearly impossible, to intim intimidate the Black Cobra. <laughs> Please tell the court what happened that day at Trebian. It? When it all happened, there were just two customers in my restaurant. I remember I was experimenting with the new art deco that day. Like having a, new, a large mirror between the tables, for example. Hey, perhaps that is what the old man was looking at. Like up there piercing in our glasses. It would have been seen it. Everything in reverse, no? Right there. That's actually... Exactly. If he had actually been looking through the mirror, he would have been seeing everything in re... Wait a minute! That right there might be the breaking point. Right there. What he just said. Take a look at this, everyone. Everything was being looked through a mirror. And if he and if if, if Mr. Kuda was actually looking at the mirror, he would have been seeing everything in reverse. Which means that Mr. Elg would have actually been wearing the earpiece on his right ear, not his left. So technically, Mr. Kudo was not mistaken. He actually said that Mr. Elg was actually seeing thing, was actually wearing it, was wearing the earpiece on his right ear. Technically, he would be right. If he was actually looking at the through the mirror. Mm. Exactly. 
A mirror! Exactly. And suddenly the mystery disappears. The world keeps turning, so roll with it. That'll explain the coffee, tr uh, coffee cup and the earpiece conundrum. The mirror would have been everything, would have made everything appear back to front. Exactly. Gladly, Your Honor. Hold it! And who were those two customers, exactly? Hmm. The victim and Mr. Kudo. You're referring to the yesterday's witness, I presume. What about the other man Maggie say, says she saw at the table? Something tells me Mr. Armstrong isn't planning to disclose his existence. That's true, Maya. Guess I'll just have to try a different approach for the time being. Hold it! Hold it! You were experimenting with Art Deco? How come I never heard about this until today? I actually I am quite familiar with the language of interior design. Please stay on topic. Why didn't you tell the court about this before? <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Armstrong. This deco you mentioned, are you referring to some sort of a culture? No. Art Deco is a style of design, Your Honor. He's talking about interior design. Walls, ceilings, carpets, that sort of thing. Indeed. Right there. Hold it. How big of a mirror are we talking about here? Four meters wide and two meters high. Wow. Exactly. Ceiling. I don't think there was a ceiling on the mirror. There was one in the kitchen, I can tell you that. No, there wasn't. I thought so. Something's not right. Uh-uh. Leave it. He couldn't lie about such a huge object like that. Must have been there in the restaurant somewhere. Of 
else I just mentioned it was in the kitchen. So the witness yesterday had seen the victim reflected in a mirror. Hold it! Hold it! Normally I'd expect people to know the difference between a reflection and a real object. Objection! I'm not done yet there, Godot. If something is impo isn't normal, it is impossible, is that it? That's not a top knot, Godot. I believe it is called a bun. And it's actually worn by many Asian women. But yes, Godot is correct. Lack of norm normality is no basis for discounting an argument. Right there. Everything would have been in reverse. Hold it! Hold it! You would have seen everything in reverse. Well said there, Maya. How do you phrase it again? The boy was wearing the same was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. He's left you without a doubt. Then he used the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. If he saw everything he described reflected in a mirror, then everything he saw would have been on the left. Everything he saw on the left was actually on the right. Bingo! And that clears up all the problems with his testimony, I guess. Or does it? It's kind of hard to believe everything, everything's the fault of a mirror, but... Actually, yes, Maya. I do think he saw everything ref reflected in the mirror. If he did, it would explain all the contradictions in this testimony. True, Maya. True. Hold it! Your Honor, the coffee cup, the earpiece, and the HMD. Let's think back over Mr. Kudo's. Let's think back over Mr. Kudo's testimony for a second, shall we? The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. It was his left ear, without a doubt. So to summarize, <clears throat> we, were we were told both the HMD and the earpiece were on the victim's left side. Now, if Mr. Kudo saw all that as a reflection in a mirror, it means both the HMD and the earpiece were actually on the victim's right side. Mm-mm. Unfortunately, that's where we run into a monumental contradiction with the facts. 
If Mr. Kudo really did see everything in a mirror, why is it that the HMD is now on the wrong side of his head? genuinely observed the victim reflected in a mirror. Then we would have expected the victim's earpiece eyepiece to have been over his right eye. Objection! Oh, you're not gonna fool me there, Godo. Sorry. Hmm. Mr. Kudo sworn testimony? What's the most striking thing about Mr. Elg? The victim's eyepiece. Exactly. I'm already aware of that, Godo. Sadly, I agree. I must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash in much of his testimony. A mirror can't be beaten by a handful of seeds, nor can it, nor can it lie. What exactly was the old man looking at? Fill us in, Mr. Armstrong. Go on, tell the court. We're all ears. Let's go up, shall we? The mirror. Right here, right in the middle. That's where the mirror is. Wait a minute! Right there! Now, Mr. Kudo actually said he was actually sitting right there, the chair, the bottom right. If he is actually telling the truth, then there's no way he could have actually seen the victim. Not from where it was singing, it's sitting anyway. I thought so. Ah! Interesting. So he moved it. He actually moved the mirror away from. He basically moved it out of the way after the crime was committed. From the table next to the victims, Mr. Kudo could have seen the victim in the mirror.
We can keep up, except for the guy breaking out in a cold sweat. Are you quite sure about that, Mr. Armstrong? Go out of it, Your Honor. Hold it! Hold it! So run this by me again. The mirror was here, correct? Really? Because I know if I were you, I wouldn't I wouldn't have put a mirror there. It would have been in the way. Objection. Huh? Speaking figuratively, Godot. Temporarily placing a mirror in the spot would. would only be like <sighs> Hold it! Hold it! Where would that be? No. Mr. Armstrong, tell the court what you know now! I am not in the mood for this tonight! see the victim from that particular seat. Hmm. Let's take a look at those plans again, shall we? One moment. Right there. There's a wall blocking view. If someone was actually sitting in that chair, right there, then they, there was no way they would be a, actually, they would actually be able to see the victim. Yeah, some more of that. Exactly. Yes. The old man was sitting at the table next to the victim. Why does that sound kind of odd? Hold it! Hold it! Did you move the mirror while Mr. Kudo was off calling the police? the huge mirror like that all by yourself? <laughs> true, true, Your Honor. Did you move anything else from the crime scene, Mr. Armstrong? Hold it! Sure about that? Yeah, there is. Just can't put my finger on it. Exactly. 
No, Kodo. I'm perfectly fine. mention anything about a really large mirror. You'd think someone would have. Maggie didn't. Neither did Mr. Kudo. And the only logical explanation is that there was no mirror inside Trebian that day. Now they just gotta prove it somehow. I know exactly what's wrong. Mm. One moment, everyone. I know exactly what's wrong. Objection! Objection, Your Honor. This piece of evidence contradicts with the testimony we have heard, Your Honor. Exactly. The crime photo. Yes. This photo clearly shows something that theoretically should not exist. <laughs> what is this something that should not exist in that photo? Quite an easy answer. Take a look at this, everyone. See that vase over there? Take that! Check this out. I think it's pretty obvious that this is what should not be in the picture. Exactly, the vase. Your Honor, I'm telling you that there should not be any vase on this table. Because it very clearly contradicts with this piece of evidence. Bingo! Check this out. Right there! When the incident occurred, I broke the vase at my seat. Check this out. There is one thing that was clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Kudo broke the vase that was on the table where he was sitting. And yet, as the court could see, there is an unbroken vase on the table next to the victim. Why? Because Mr. Kudo was not in fact sitting at the table next to the victim at all! Prove me wrong, then, Godo. Try me. Sure. 
Sure about that? Exactly! There's only one conclusion we could draw from this contradiction. There was no Mary and Trevi on that day! Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie! Confusing the court, Godot. The witness did not clean up the vase. Nope. Objection! Objection, Your Honor! Nobody's gonna buy that garbage. Unfortunately, Godot, that does not quite work for me. Mr. Armstrong already testified to the contrary in his own words. I did not touch anything else except the mirror. Well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? I was right. There was no mirror in the restaurant that day. Revelation, we return back to the original problem. Why did the victim have an earpiece in an ear in which he couldn't hear? Take it on there, Godot. How do I explain it? If I can answer this, then I'll be that much closer to the truth. I can feel it. No problem there, Maya. There's more than just this one contradiction, Maya. Remember what Maggie told us? There was another man at the victim's table. And there was a sample CD on the victim's table. If it flies in the face of Mr. Kudo's testimony... Oh, flies, yeah. And I, I think I know the reason why nothing in this case is adding up. Gladly, Your Honor. The reason behind all the contradictions in Mr. Kudo's testimony is quite simple. Gotcha. This case is riddled with contradictions. Yet there is one very simple answer that clears all of them up. The incident Mr. Kudo witnessed and the incident the victim experienced were two completely different events. Yes. The victim that Mr. Kudo saw was not going to get all. It was an imposter, a phony pretending to be Mr. L. Obviously, unlike the victim, there was nothing wrong with the victim. The imposter is left ear drum. That's how he ended up wearing the earpiece in his left ear by mistake. 